Okay, welcome back. Um, this is the, I think this is the fourth look that we've been doing at the uh, Hocket. We're going to look at a slightly different application of the idea. We're going to mainly be using this uh, MIDI file or MIDI pattern that's here. Sort of in a Mixolydian type kind of mode. Um, still got the same eight voices that are arrayed uh, around here. And if you remember that uh, Hocket essentially distributes the melodic line across a number of voices. So that's two voices. Um, because I'm using uh, operator and I'm using different, slightly different kind of um, instruments here, um, we get these kind of variations in tonality. So it sounds very different to when we hear it as a single instrument playing the line. Fantastic. And then we come to three voices, four voices, five voices. Now on the sixth voice, I've got a couple of uh, things here. So um, I'm going to take them off first of all. So on the sixth voice, I've got the idea of, um, I'm going to use a, a scale plugin here to essentially um, constrain the, um, the outputs of the chord plugin. So this is what's important. This isn't to make the, um, the MIDI pattern that's coming in somehow conform to a key. It's not the same as uh, the previous video when uh, we were using random. So here, we're going to set a chord which is basically an octave and a fifth. So you can hear that. So as you can hear, that's a really interesting kind of variation just by assigning a chord plugin. And again, because it's in octaves and fifths, the scale plugin is basically used to uh, constrain the fifth that's being played here. Okay, so one of the other things we can also do is to, uh, or I've experimented with, is uh, using an arpeggiator. Now, one of the things to appreciate here is that the arpeggiator needs to be running at a higher subdivision than the division of the notes that are being distributed to this particular voice. You'll see what I mean. So this pattern moves in eighth notes. So I'm going to change the rate of the arpeggiator to eighth notes and listen to the difference. Right? So it introduces a rest because first of all, it needs to see the note before it can actually put it out. So as you go into higher um, rates, I quite like that one. So this one here, what I what I've set up here is that the steps go up in ascending seconds. So this gives the illusion of a of a second, a major second, and then also a major third following in close succession. So you can see this here. The distance is set to that. If I set it to seven, it'll be in accumulated fifths, which may or may not be what you want. But that one is quite cool. If I set it to one, it only sort of does the first couple of notes. So you can hear that. This one gives us an interesting little kind of turn. Now, one of the things I've done here in the chord plugin as well is to vary the, um, the dynamic level of these additional notes. You can have them sort of pushing out sort of full velocity or more if you want it to. But I kind of find it sort of nice that, that they're a little bit more subdued. OK, so I hope you've enjoyed that sort of uh, little walk through there. Um, if you like sort of seeing these videos, you like the content, please remember to like and subscribe. I'll be making stuff anyway, so <laughs> but it would be really good if you did. All right. Take care now and have fun. Remember, if you want to buy a uh, Hocket, well, it, it's donation wear. So I do recommend that you donate to what is a very good cause. Okay, until next time, remember to like and subscribe. Bye for now.